Hi, everyone. So uh, I've had a couple of messages saying what what camera did you shoot with? Um, why did you get the camera you've got? So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, it's not a full in-depth review. It's going to give you a few points as to why I got it, the reasoning behind it, a couple of points as to what I'm not too crazy about but can live with, and good old-fashioned honest truth. I'm not being sponsored by anybody. Cold hard cash paid for this, all right? Guys, do appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. Um, those of you who already have, um, let's get into it and have a look. So why did I buy this over mirrorless? Okay, why don't I get an R3 or R6 or whatever it is, Canon R6. <sighs> Money, really. I just couldn't afford that level of camera when I wanted to purchase. And that is the simplest reason, okay? I'm not gonna lie, that is it. I wanted a pro style or pro size uh, camera uh, because it's a massive upgrade to what I had. I had an old, probably 13, 14 year old Canon 550D, right? I've had it for donkey's years. My old war horse, it's done everything, been all around the planet with me, and it's just kept going. And that's why I wanted a change. Now, why do I like this? Okay, you already know the reason, because of the cost, this is why I really got it. Um, and I'd already used, well, I'm not, I had a go with an ATD and I liked it, okay? Okay, things I like about it, right? Um, I can put all of my old lenses on it. It's quite simple. I don't need to get a converter or anything to put on it. Everything fits Canon EF lenses, okay? I've already got a few. So they go straight from one to the other. One good reason why I like it, all right? It has a very fast shutter speed, okay? So, sorry, not very fast shutter speed. Very fast shutter count. So when you push the trigger button, it you know, up to 10 frames per second. Um, depending on what you shoot, either raw, compact raw, high JPEG, what have you, would depend on the buffer speed, okay? I haven't counted, but I've fired up to 20 and it hasn't hit the buffer yet. I really, you know, because I'm doing wildlife, nature, I fire off in bursts of three, four, fives, give it a burst, leave it, give it a burst, leave it, give it a burst, I don't go unless I'm actually really tracking something and I really want to try and get that action, all right? But there is a buffer. I've got a high-speed SD card in there. I've never really hit that buffer. I, maybe I should try it out. Who knows? Another reason, it's got a large sensor. 32.5 megapixels. That's quite a lot, right? It's quite big. And the reason I wanted to get that, because I'm photographing things that could be slightly further away from me. Um, and I and I, maybe sometimes you have to crop in. It's gonna keep a lot of the detail, all right? Um, I'm not going to lie though, um, I do use Topaz software to denoise, crop in, enlarge, all that kind of stuff. How many photographers don't? Many of them are a liar if they don't, right? Um, totally out there, that's what I use sometimes. I try and get it right in the camera if I can though, but I do have my backups. Um, why else do I like it? Battery life is pretty good, okay? Even on a single battery, anything up to 13 to 1500 shots on that, okay? I've got a battery grip on here. There's two batteries in there, so extend that, you know, 2800, 3000 maybe. Um, I've been out and shot 2500 and it's gone down half power, you know? It's, it's still going strong, so long battery life. Don't wanna be faffing about in the field trying to get, you know, batteries in and why have you, when it's cold and you've got cold fingers and everything. Um, the very angle, for me, that's a new piece of kit. I've never had a camera that does that before. And if, because I'm doing video with this now, and on that it does shoot up to 4K, although it does crop in somewhat on 4K. Generally, I'm, I'm sticking to HD at the moment. Um, but you know, it might be a kind of time when, when I, when I use some 4k. Okay. But I like this, so I can spin it around. 
can have it at an angle. So when I'm looking down here, I've got low level and I'm looking down here, I can pan across and keep an eye on the screen whilst pulling it down. A lovely, lovely feature. All right. And it's touch screen as well, so you can adjust all your settings on there. That's why one of the reasons why I like it. And it's also got the pro style back as well. So everything's where you want it. Everything's exactly where you want it with your fingers. Okay, Q button to bring up the menu, etc. Um, scroll wheel at the top to go through your menus. Even you can uh, buy the trigger button there. You can actually select uh, which focus points you want. Oh, I love that one. I use that one a lot. Okay, so other features on it. Um, they say it's good for wildlife and nature photography. Yeah, on bird photography. I'd agree with that. Yeah, although uh, with this lens on, it's quite a beast, quite heavy. You know, with a uh, Sigma 150 to 600 lens on it, it's it's, uh, it's under two kilos, but it's still quite a, quite a weight. I would have thought. Um, just know that before you get into it. You know, uh, but just the body on its own, minus the the extra battery grip, it's it's the same weight as any SLR out there. Yeah, DSLR out there. So it's focus ports, I, I said about that earlier on, yeah? Uh, so it's got 45 focus points staring a, a, a wide area of the sensor. Um, either single right in the middle and you can move it anywhere you like with a little joystick on the back. Um, goes into a group of nine, gets bigger, single group, and you can, you can move them all around the screen. Love that. When you're photographing nature and you want to focus on that eye, it's really, really good. On that focus point focuses on the eye when you're using live view so you're looking through the screen it has got face detection and eye detection as well but only in live view when you're looking through the vote uh, eyepiece not some it doesn't do that okay but it's a good feature to have especially when you're shooting video right it's got quite a high iso as well um 25,600. Um, it can get noisy up around them things, but the reason why I like that high ISO range is because it's very challenging conditions sometimes, you know, in the evenings, gold now, that kind of thing, lights getting dim, you're shooting in sort of dim conditions and it can pull up there. And as I said before, I use a denoise program if it's too bad. I try my best to get the lowest shutter speed and the widest aperture to let as much light in as I can with it. But you can only do so much with a camera and what have you to get that shot. And at the end of the day, you want to get that shot, right? So a little bit of post-production, I can live with that. Um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, another feature is, you, you know, you can use your phone as a remote control, set it up, doing landscape photography, you know, you, your remote has gone haywire, you've left it at home. How many people actually have always got their phone on them? Everywhere, right? using your phone you can set it off and you can play with the settings as well on the phone change shutter speed iso all that kind of stuff aperture you can do that all from the phone as well which is quite a nice little bit of kit also you can download the pictures to your phone and have a better look so if that screen's not good enough you can bring them onto the phone and open them up so that's why i like it and that's why i'm going to keep it what's not so good so with that really large sensor that's dragging in quite a lot of information yeah and what i found when i'm shooting sort of on the water and even even when it's overcast down you've got softer light um white birds swans um gray crusty greaves when they turn over a little bit and you've got the white of the bellies anything we got white on it it can blow out somewhat <clears throat> so what i've been doing i've been stopping down two thirds sometimes a full stop just to try and prevent that so i'm keeping my whites and in post, I'm just bringing up my shadows. That's one thing I found. I'd like to know in the comments if anybody else has found that as well uh, with the, the, the 90D. Um, as I've said, with a battery grip on it, it can be a bit weighty, but that's it. All in all, I love it. Yeah, it's it's a nice piece of kit. Price-wise, you're looking anywhere sort of... When I got this, it was actually under a 1,000 quid. Now you're looking at anywhere from a thousand to 1250 thereabouts, just sort of body alone. The prices have gone up everywhere, as we know. Uh, but shop around, you might be able to get yourself a deal. Or some of the bigger stores, they do second hand markets look there as well. So 
reasons to get one of these guys, the, the mirrorless ones are out of your range. And I know people are M50, that kind of thing, M, the lower range mirrorless ones. But if you want more of a pro level kind of thing and you can't afford, you know, sort of two grand for a body, and some of them like five and a half grand for just the body alone, even in 2023, guys, you can't go much wrong with the 90D. So as I said, it isn't a full in-depth review, all right? But it, these are the reasons why I like it. Cool, right. So, guys, I don't often do videos like this because it's a, it's a, it's a wildlife nature thing. But I just thought you might like to know why I got the, the, the beast that I did. Guys, please do keep hitting the like button. Hit the dingly bell if you want to see more. Please subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. Thanks very much.